and teachers. This will be the first of a series of uh, Sanskrit terminology for your yoga practice. First pose we're looking at, one you know, Trikonasana. If you break it down, you'll see how the, the Sanskrit, they put words together, it makes one word, and how sometimes you'll have to cut a letter away and put another one on and it will create the new pose. So, Trikonasana, three, three, Kona, Kona, or angle, and Asana, seat, or pose. And uh, we, we pronouncing, I'm going to stay with the pronunciation of South of India. So to give you an example, South of India, we could say Trikonasana with the accent on the three. And North of India would be more with the accent starting on the second syllable, which is Trikonasan. Trikonas, Trikonasana. Yeah. So trikona, Trikonasana. Yeah, so it changes the, the flow. Trikonasana. Triangle pose. So. The width of the legs will depend on what style of yoga you're doing. In Iyengar yoga, they do it very wide, which I find is quite challenging for beginners. And they say that the ankle should be underneath the wrist. I like try that's the distance I like for warrior poses with a bit of a drastness. But for Trikonasana, it's a little smaller. And traditionally we were taught heel to arch. So you're standing with the one leg here in the middle of the arch and the back leg in line with the heel. This foot can be 90 degrees or 45 or between that. It's commonly people come in and stand like this and there's no strength in that leg. So you will really feel the nice strength on the outside of the foot because you're lifting the thigh. And on all your standing poses, you'll see that. You lift the thigh, little toe on the floor and there's your triangle position. Inhale. Now there's so many variations you can do um, with your arms. So let's try just the classical. You reach out. I like to really lift and lengthen. And if you want your students to have really nice alignment, instead of just trying to get deep into the pose, you don't go into it. So there's a variation just on the shin. Or you can teach them more Iyengar style with props and put them on a brick. And then the brick can always go smaller until the brick disappears. A younger style, and that's why you wouldn't really aim for the hand uh, with the smallest stance of the hand down on the floor yeah, because um, when it's wider, then you can see how that happens. Yeah, it's a different stance completely. So if it's smaller, in Ashtanga, you go index a little finger to bind around the big toe, you can go for that and you press down in the big toe. Now, you want the hips to be square. That's how they're taught now, you just go square the hips. It's like, okay, what I've realized is that you don't really want to force the hips. You want to rotate with the glute muscles and with the inner thigh, rotate so that it gets pulled back. You can do it initially and go down, which sometimes makes it a bit blocky in the hips. I like to go, you soft and you just chop it. Don't worry where this hip goes, it goes a little bit and it doesn't matter. The stronger this leg gets, the more it will. So we go down, and then once you're down there, start to work on the hip rotation. So lifting the tummy, lengthening the coccyx down, opening the hip, and reach. Okay, arm variations. Let's do some arm variations on the other side. So that's how I turn. I like to turn the one foot and then shift into another one. So you always have to check that the students bring their whole foot around, they don't. Okay, bring it to 45, at least, uh, sorry, 90, at the minimum. Strong in the inner thigh, and so let's, we're not gonna go fully down, just to there, take the arm over, that's one variation. You can take it up a little bit at a 45 degree angle and look up at the palm. That's when we, we can look at the palm, but it's a bit, Mm. There you would look at the palm, there you would maybe even look down at the floor, you can create it as you like, uh, wrap it around, it's a nice variation because that creates a torso twisting around, and other variation, oh yeah, I've just made up anything like stretching out to make people realize that you're really trying to 
use the leg muscles to lengthen out. And a very nice one, this was to stop too much pressure on my hamstring, I took the first arm out of the equation. And it was really interesting. Feel how the legs really start to engage because you're not forced to jump. You can't measure how far you're going. You go according to your body. Okay. Then, uh, the thought about straight legs. Like we often are like straight legs, lift the thighs, lift the knees, and straighten, push the feet in. That's great. But sometimes there's injuries, sometimes there's postural needing to look at things. And bent legs really works well. Like yoga synergy does everything on bent legs. I'm sure there's more styles like Budo Khan would also kind of flow through and not have this kind of rigid um, position. So to do the whole triangle pose on bent legs, really nice. Okay, so even here, I don't worry about the hip, but I do want to, that's kind of a tattletail now because straight leg, you won't see that so commonly, so, so easily. But now, with a bend, it's like, that looks weird. You always want to be bending the toe, the knee over the second toe, so that's more correct. And so it will teach you how to get strength in that inner thigh and rotate the hip open in time. Also protecting your knee joint, because now you can straighten maybe without twisting at the knee. So get strong in the hips, and you can even stay bent throughout the pose take whatever variation of your arms you like and if you want to from there you go into let's do the other side bending the knees opening the thigh opening the hip and you can go into straight legs so maybe start by feeling straighten up the back leg yeah that feels good then it's more like a warrior pose but that's okay or in, in time straighten up the and then you keep lifting so to straighten from there, you have to get active in the feet, active through the belly, and lifting up in the thighs. Really nice way to, to teach it. Okay, so that's Trikonasana. And just to give you a bit that sort of standing poses, um, there are many standing poses that have evolved and don't have Sanskrit names that are used very often in your vinyasa flow. And so the first one is called runner's lunge. This one is called high lunge. But it's not really any of the yoga poses because it's a variation of um, warrior. Okay. So high lunge. Um, Three-legged downward facing dog. So you've got down dog, I do more Nasana, and then you've got the three-legged down dog. Core plank. You Pull the knee to the armpit. Now you can always pull to the opposite armpit. This is all nice to prepare you for hand balances. You can go down to the elbow. Generally people will be at the elbow. Or you can work down at the wrist. And come back. And pigeon pose actually, because you get Raja Kapotasana. Pigeon pose itself is also a bit of a variation. So other leg up. Let's play around the opposite armpit, same armpit, opposite elbow, same armpit, ah, elbow, opposite wrist, Whoa. same wrist, press down, come back, and relax. Yeah, because pigeon pose, we know is this, but in Sanskrit you'll only know Raja Kaputasana, that is the full expression of the pose, um, yeah, king pigeon, because uh, Kaputasana is a pigeon, and the reason it's got its name is because of this big chest. You really get an open chest, you take hold of the foot, and you reach into the full expression of the pigeon. But not everybody doing that, so this is pigeon pose. And an Australian teacher called this... Uh, because you can, can stay. Sometimes the back still is a little bit sore here, so you come down. And this is really nice also to just balance here. Or you can go full, and this is what he calls roadkill. So 
doesn't really have any names. Okay, so let's do Raja Kapatasana on the other side. I wasn't meaning to teach you Raja Kapatasana, that was just extra now. Now you know pigeon's pose. So generally that would be, and let me quickly do some anatomy, yeah? Beginners will start even off like kind of that, depending on how, because it is a glute stretch. You're trying to stretch the glute of the front leg. So that's great, and then the toe pointed. As the glute gets more supple, the foot can move more out. The nicest way to move your foot out, I like, is to lift, extend. So it's like a split. I'm going to lift and pull longer back. So eventually, this leg goes to a 90 degree angle. And if the glute is tight, the knee might compensate and be painful. So you really want to work on the glutes and add some stretches in for the glutes. Okay, but and then you can flex the foot there because that's really nice, like log stacking pose. The double pigeon that you see in front, we'll discuss that one later. And yeah, so for that full Rajaka Patasana, you're going to have the foot like a beginner the heel to the hip and toe pointed because that alignment doesn't look and feel right. So toes pointed and then reach it up. So initially there's nice variations just to learn that, just do that. And then later I'll teach you guys how to, they call it reverse the arm or I can't remember, flip the arm. Okay, so you're there and you lift and you really hug into the muscles, lengthen out, reach, into Raja Kapitasana oh, and favorite Bada Fitting Dog. Cool. Lesson one done. Trikonasana. Thank you. Namaste.